All right, welcome back to another episode of Chad and Nate here at EG4 Electronics. And uh, Chad, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Outstanding, outstanding. You know, it's it's a little humid outside today. It is a little humid out, and uh, you know, I think we could use a little bit more cooling in where we're at right now. You know, the our current unit's just not hanging in to, to what we need. And it's using a lot of power. It, it is using a ton of power. And that's why we're going to talk about this little fellow in the background here. Yeah. This is our 24K hybrid mini split. This guy runs on AC and DC power. It is a great little piece of equipment. Yeah, I think, you know, me personally, this is probably one of the, the coolest pieces of equipment that, uh, you know, we have. I see what you did there. The coolest piece of equipment. Because yeah, it cools your house down. Uh, but why is this... Why do I think this is so cool? I think this is so cool because, like Nate said, it is DC and AC compatible. So you can have your solar panels up on the roof and run your, you know, your supplies right directly into this compressor right here, and it will, you know, convert and invert that power to utilize your your solar power directly at that unit without any any additional equipment. So you won't need an inverter, you won't need any capacitors, you won't need anything else. <laughs> that's, that's very true, but you know, I was thinking about what you said there being cool. When this thing is flying off the shelf, it is hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do fly off the shelf. I mean, it's, you know, there was an individual uh, company that came in and they bought, I think, a hundred of these units. Really? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's impressive. So I'm trying to get my wife to let me throw a couple of these in my house. And her whole thing is she doesn't want to see it. Well, you know what I don't want to see? I don't want to see $800 electric bills for my two AC units in my house. Yeah, and, and this unit right here can cut your electric bill. I'm not going to say in half. I don't, you know, I don't know what everybody's you know, usage rates sure. are, but it's going to drop it down substantially because if you are using this unit paired with you know, six to eight solar panels, depending on the wattage, it's going to be powered directly off those solar panels and never really be pulling anything off that utility that's right well you have the option too to not be grid tied right yeah. you could just run this guy on, on just sunlight alone yeah absolutely i mean you're not going to obviously have any heating or cooling capabilities uh, you know when it's nighttime sure um or you know possibly when there's a bad storm coming through and you know you, that that system's just not producing as much as what this uh 24k needs but when you do have that opportunity to connect it to your main panel and you have that combination of dc what, what, what is that combination there? that's a 20 amp two pole breaker it is a 20 amp two pole breaker yep, so so it doesn't take a whole lot of power that's no, pretty efficient especially if you're only running it at night if you're running on the on the pv during the day your daytime usage rate should be fairly low yeah and especially you know you live over in phoenix and it's hot in the summertime cool. so I'll tell you what prime time during the day it's extremely hot this thing is going to be cooling down your house oh i'm cranking it down all day cranking it down to 61 you're, you're utilizing that sun to power that and cool down your house that's right and that's taking a little bit of that load time off of my traditional ac units yep and you know it's it's great for natural disasters you know if there's a natural disaster we're kind of feeling that right now in uh in texas obviously it's not a natural disaster but there's been a lot of a lot of storms a lot of tornadoes coming through we had a bad storm come through last now last night and half the town is still without power that's right we, we got trees down power lines i i heard there was some roofs missing over on the uh, other side of town there yeah. but with this system if you have this system with a few solar panels up on the roof you're still going to stay cool well, you're still going to have that heat um because you don't need that grid. But what if your roof flies off? Well, then uh, that is a different that, that, issue. That, that's that's the, a problem. That's the downside, right? That's the downside. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're dealing with that, yeah, you might have to to, to rethink about uh, maybe where you live. Well, you just got to go find your roof and get your <laughs> solar panels back. You know, yeah. you could set those guys up on the side of the house there and probably probably still generate yeah, some you power. Yeah, probably, probably could. But yeah, these things are are very cool systems. You know, I want to put one up on my family farm in Michigan and you know, kind of get some heating and cooling in the barns for very easy, you know, just by installing a few solar panels now, on the roof. Now, how many of these do you think you'd have to run to, to heat or cool your barn out there? Just one. Just, this just guy one. right here can do up to 1,350 square feet of heating and cooling space in an open environment. Man, that's almost half the size of my house. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's very impressive what it can do. Now, so... I guess if you put this in a in a in an open area, right, you're probably going to get the most benefit out of it versus in a, in a smaller bedroom, maybe a ten by ten, twelve by twelve. But that's a nice benefit too, is you can go ahead and throw one of these in every room in the house, right? And then everybody has their own climate control. Yeah, absolutely. You can have it in you know every room, every you know section of a house, upstairs, downstairs, and run them separately. But you can still 
have each one paired to solar panels and being 100% powered by the sun. That's right. And this has an application where you can control this right from your smartphone. Yep, exactly. You control it from your smartphone. You control it from the remote that each unit comes with. It, 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 it's set up to be very, you know, quickly and easily installed. I was just going to bring that up, actually. You know, you don't need an HVAC technician to, to plug this guy in. In, in most areas. In, yeah, in most areas. In most areas, you know, anybody can typically go out there and install this product themselves because it does come with 16 feet of pre-charged line. That's right. So all you got to do is tighten them up, make sure you get those locking pins in there so you don't have any evacuation of any coolant, and, uh, you know, crank open that valve and boom, you're running. Yeah, I would say, you know, from the installation aspect of this, probably the hardest thing to do is running the conductors, the wires from the main unit over to that 20 amp breaker in your main panel that you know, it, you know you probably would want to hire a certified electrician sure, to do that work. sure yeah yeah you don't want to go reaching your hands out there and uh without knowing what you're doing exactly but for me personally i'm not going to grid time on i'm just going to go ahead and throw some solar panels some additional solar panels up on the roof of my house and i'm going to power it that way because it's just really going to take away that heavy load during the day when i really need it out there in that phoenix heat yep. and then in the evening time when rates are lower and stuff i'll just use my traditional air conditioners and should just be fine yeah it's definitely going to help offset that bill i'm, I'm hoping for somewhere around 40 percent. And, and i do i think that's a, a reasonable you know for you if not maybe i'll throw a second one up there right and then i'm definitely going to get that 40 50 percent that i'm looking to offset oh absolutely Man, my wife would be, so, she'd have so much money. She wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> she still might not like the way the, the unit looks on the wall, but uh, it'll yeah. still be better for you, know, you in the long run. A couple, couple hundred dollars in the bank a month extra is, uh, that's a big one. Absolutely. You know, I, I think she can deal with the eyesore for, for that kind of money. <laughs> but uh, again, this isn't an eyesore by any stretch, right? We have, uh, we have a couple mounted over in our facility here. Uh, we actually have a mobile unit that's in our training bus that uh, can go out on site and uh, do, some, do some technical sales training and stuff like that. And these actually look really, really good on the wall. Yeah, they're, they do. They're, they're, they're not an eyesore at all. The top unit right here is what gets installed on the wall. It's it's really not that big. You know, typically you're going to install it up near a ceiling and, uh, you know, just kind of going to blend in with that wall. Sure. You know, it's only about nine inches wide yeah. coming off the wall. It's it's very, very slim. It, it's streamlined. There, there's not a lot of bulkiness to it at all. Um, so, you know, it's great. And I think my wife's not even going to notice. No. Yeah. I'll, I'll paint the walls white and it'll just blend right it in. It will. Right. Yeah. If your walls are white, it'll blend right in. And then you have your, you know, your compressor unit that's going to sit outside and, you know, might be thinking, well, I have a, I'm going to install the indoor unit, the, the upper, upper portion of the indoor, indoor unit on the second story. Sure. I only have 16 feet of charge lines. How can I make that work? Well, we've got two options, right? First option is you can get a certified HVAC technician to make you some extended lines and then add additional coolant, right? Because you've got to fill up that space. Yep. The second option is we make a bracket kit that you can actually mount elevated on the side of your house at whatever level you need to, to be within that 16 feet of line. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, they're, they're pre-charged lines. So as soon as you get that accommodated and you get those lines hooked up, you just turn that guy on and, and you're off and running. Yeah. And it's, it's a very simple install. And, you know, I think feasibly one person could do that work in a couple of hours. So, I'd, you know, if you were going to elevate it onto like a second story bracket or platform, probably bring a buddy. Yeah, right? absolutely. The unit I think is, I want to say it's right about a hundred pounds. And I know me and you picked one up, yeah. uh, the one that we mounted. And uh, so it wasn't terribly heavy. And that's the, the outdoor condenser unit. That's not the indoor right. wall mount unit. You know, that's, that's fairly light. Oh yeah. The indoor unit, you know, 20, 30 yeah, pounds, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's very light, very easy to hook up. Um, and the hole's not really that big. So you do have to get those condenser lines back outside to the condenser outside. But uh, those lines, I think, only require about a two-inch hole you got to cut. Yep. So even if you put it in, maybe a couple years down the road, you decide it's maybe not the route you want to go, or you sell your home and the new homeowner wants to take it down, patching those holes, not really a big deal. Yeah, one thing that I think that's really, or another thing that's really cool about this product is if you are already have solar and you are at the max that, your utility will allow you to have a system on because you're grid tied. How does this benefit those individuals? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I'm going to tell you. This benefits those individuals because they can still add solar panels to power this unit. And they do not have to worry about the utility because they're not pushing back any additional power. So, so it is going to be beneficial for me in Arizona because I have a restricted access or a restricted amount of PV that I can backfeed. And I'm already at that max. I've, I've hit that 10 kilowatt threshold. Yeah. So what you're saying is I could just throw six or eight more panels up on the roof, throw this guy in there and plug it in and we're done, right? Yeah. Utility's not mad at me. I'm not mad at me. 
it, it does have some NEM benefits as well, right? Because you're not breaking into any of that and, and you're not really utilizing any of that power. So it's saving you money. Yeah. And, and to my knowledge with, you know, the way NEM works and, you know, certain things are grandfathered in with mm -hmm. NEM 2.0 versus 3.0. Sure. Yeah, um, if you were part of that timeline. Yeah, if you're absolutely. part of that timeline. You know, it, to my knowledge, this does not affect, you know, having it to go back through like permitting or anything like that if you want to add this system onto your home in those in those areas. So it's not going to affect them. You know, you can just add six or eight panels and have that power directly go into this. So now what you're doing is you're taking your existing heating and cooling system off your solar your existing solar right. and you have this now. which is one of your biggest one of your biggest costs absolutely and so now you have that additional power that if you're in a, a nice location that likes to you know credit you for that you'll have additional power to sell back to the grid or you'll have additional power to store to utilize at a later date absolutely that is a great benefit and i think that i'm gonna have to go install a couple of these in my house and I'm like i said i really want to install one up at uh my parents. You, you parents don't think you'd use it out there in South Carolina? Oh, I definitely would. I just don't have the the space for it. My house isn't quite laid out for okay for one of these. Well, I think uh, I think there's room at everybody's house. You just got to be willing to make the sacrifices. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, uh, back to what we were discussing here, dude. This thing is amazing, right? I, I love it. It's a great product. Um, I particularly like the DC availability, right? You've got that PV system. You're good with it. If you want to go to grid side as well, yep. in the instance that maybe this is your only heating and cooling avenue, right? And you need to have that nighttime, that nighttime heating and cooling. Go ahead and do that utility connection, right? I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, but it has those MC4 connectors right on the side, so you can take PV wire and run it straight into, you know, the compressor unit. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it does come with, I believe, the additional connectors. So all you got to do is get yourself some PV wire for your jumpers from that array down. And uh, you'll be good. But that's about all the time we've got today, Chad. I want to thank you for coming out and talking to us. Everybody, thanks. Uh, Nate and Chad out from EG4 Electronics. Be sure to follow the channel and uh, like and subscribe. All right. Have a good day, everyone.